Good morning and welcome to Westside Baptist Church Sunday School. Today is November 1st, 2020, and we are in session three of a series of seven about our commitment to God, to His Son, to His Word, and several other, other things. Today, we're talking about God's Word and how important it is in our life. God's Word gives trustworthy guidance for all of life. And we know there are many how-to books out there and online videos, but what really matters is how we live life. And the only source where we can truly get everything we need is God's Word. The Bible gives us the answers that we need as we go through life. And God will also guide us in understanding His Word. The scripture for today is from Psalm 119, verses 1 through 11. And this psalm is a very, well, it's a very unique psalm about the Word of God. There are 176 verses in this one chapter. There are 22 sections or stanzas, and each stanza has eight of the verses in it. So 22 times eight is 176. And there happen to be 22 letters in the Hebrew alphabet. And each section starts with a letter in the Greek alphabet. So it is an important part of the Bible about God's Word. As we talk about it, uh, when you look in the Hebrew, uh, in Psalms 119, there are 178 words that will refer to things that we need to learn. The Torah, which is the Hebrew book of instruction is mentioned 25 times. The word of the Lord is mentioned 24 times. Judgments are mentioned 23 times. Testimonies or covenants are, are mentioned 23 times. Commands are mentioned 22 times. Statutes or laws 21 times. And precepts 21 times, and a saying or a promise 19 times. So as we go to the Lord and pray, we want to thank Him for His Word. And this psalm affirms God's Word and the priority of, he, of His Word. It is a, it's a very precious gift that we have. Let us pray. Our Lord and God, we thank You again that we can look into Your Word, Lord. We thank You that we have Your Word and that we have the Holy Spirit that shows us how You want us to, to live, Lord, and the Holy Spirit hel helps us look into your word and shares thoughts about 
exactly what it means to each of us, Lord. And so as we look into your word, we ask that you would guide us. And I pray this in the name of your Son and my Savior. Amen. Brother Allen and Otis, Otis Prater, and I went on a trip several years ago down to Panama. And uh, we were with this Indian tribe that just had gotten the Word of God in, in their own language. And uh, we were happy to be there with them and see the joy that they had when they had their own Bible. And that doesn't really mean a whole lot to us. We've had the Word of God for over 500 years. And in virtually every home, the, there are several Bibles. And so with us, it's a common thing. Now that doesn't mean that we read it like we should, but they were very happy to have the Word of God in their own language. So having it is good, but reading it, understanding it, sharing it, and actually living by what we have in it is the most important thing. In Psalms 119, verses 1 through 4, the Bible says this, Blessed are the undefiled in the way who walk in the law of the Lord. Blessed are they that keepeth his testimonies and that seek him with the whole heart. They also do no iniquity. They walk in his ways. Thou hast commanded us to keep thy precepts very diligently. God's word guides us in our daily walk, and we are to live according to it. And when we do, the Bible says that we will be blessed and that we will be happy in 1 Kings 12, 8 and in 2 and Second Chronicles 9, 7. <clears throat> so, as we look at things that happen to us, as we go through our lives, there are times of sadness. There are times when we make bad choices. There are unfortunate circumstances that happen to us. There is sorrow and regret. But the psalmist here made a connection with being happy and being undefiled. Well, what does that mean? It means to be blameless, unblemished, whole, complete. Such a person lives their life with integrity. And nobody can accuse him or her of doing something that's unjust, unfair, dishonest, or wrong. Because that person makes being upright a top priority in their life. So blameless living starts with devoting ourselves to the law of the Lord and allowing His Word to guide our lives. His instructions can be trusted to put us on the path that will lead to happiness. And walking in this path will nourish our lifestyle of obeying Him. The psalmist repeated God's expectation 
to be blessed or happy. He asserted that happiness comes by way of obedience. And he says that we won't regret it, that we need to pay close attention to it. Otherwise, we might miss the blessings of our Lord and Savior. So we need to devote ourselves to obedience every day. And we also need to seek Him on a regular basis. And when we obey Him, we are eager to seek Him. And He encourages us to look to Him as we obey Him. And when we do, we will find Him, as in Proverbs 8, 17 and Matthew 6, 6. So we need to keep His laws, His commandments. This a type of person will do no evil. And uh, that is because God's laws, especially the Ten Commandments, leaves no room for us to do anything else but what God expects from us. So in our walk with Him, he gives us all the guidelines that we need. And because of that, we don't want to sin against Him. And so the Lord, when we were saved, gave us a new life. And we want to reject the sinful lifestyle. And His Spirit works in us to guide us and empowers us to live the right way by seeking Him, by reading His Word and understanding what He wants. In 1 John 3, 9 and uh, 1 John 5, 18, the psalmist began to talk with God in verse 4 instead of talking about Him. <clears throat> and we are to understand and do what He has asked us to do. He has commanded us. And uh, we don't honor in the right way sometimes, but He gives us 1 John 1, 9, that if we confess our sins, He is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. He gives us the necessary things so that we can walk with Him. When the psalmist said that blessed are the undefiled, that walk in the way. He was saying a person whose walk is blameless will find the highest form of human satisfaction and the ultimate experience in human life. And that can only be found in the Word of God through the help of the Holy Spirit. So he wants us to be devoted to Him and to seek Him. And when we do, we will find Him. <clears throat> We're talking about a lifestyle. And following in His ways means making choices and changing our habits that reflect our devotion to Him. And the Holy Spirit works with us to guide us and empower us. So that's what we 
need to spend our time and our talents on is obeying our Savior so that we can have a deeper one-on-one -on -one actual relationship with Him that results in happiness. We are children who live in the love of our Father and should want nothing more than to grow in a deeper relationship with Him. Psalm 119 goes on in verses 5 through 8, and it says this, Oh, that my ways were directed to keep thy statutes. Then shall I not be ashamed when I have respect unto all thy commandments. I will praise thee with uprightness of heart when I shall have learned thy righteous judgments. I will keep thy statutes. O oh, forsake me not utterly. God's word assures us that we can be set free from shame. The psalmist here, he was dedicated to the Lord and the Lord had put him on a journey of growing spiritually and it showed in his lifestyle and it was not something that he did because of who he was, it was because he loved God and had him in his heart and he wanted to obey God. God never changes so we can trust him. His commands are the same they don't ever fade away. They're not outdated. And they endure forever. And when we look at ourselves through the lens of God's statutes, we see that we have a long ways to go before we become mature believers. So there is a gap from where we are to where he calls us to be. And we need to be completely devoted to him. In in the Old Testament and in the New early on, God's people did everything they could to not hurt themselves and, and to be ashamed because that hurt, hurt the person and his family. It was a very bad thing to do something that was wrong. And <clears throat> shame is one of Satan's greatest weapons. He uses shame hoping to keep us down, to make us feel unworthy to worship God, unworthy to follow him, or even know him. Satan uses this weapon to make us not like ourselves, and believe that we are not worthy of God's love. But the psalmist was saying there is a major difference between shame and conviction. Shame is something that Satan throws at us to keep us down. But conviction comes from God's Holy Spirit with the purpose of leading us to repent and turn back to Him. So 
it isn't exactly like that today. Uh, we don't have the same problems with shame as the people in the Old Testament and early on. Uh, but we need to learn that we don't want to have the shame in our lives and we need to learn from God's word how that uh, we don't want that to happen. Paul said that he was not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ in Romans 1.16 and 2 Timothy 1.2. So we need to be that same way. And we need to praise God. When we give ourselves some time to think about the gap between God's command and our lifestyles, then we understand why the psalmist wanted to praise God. And we need to thank God for his patient uh, faithfulness in our lives because he is very faithful. <clears throat> when we thank him, our minds and hearts turn to everything he's done for us. Taken together, praise and thanksgiving create the perfect climate for an authentic relationship. And uh, it is more than just an event or a time that's marked. Uh, it is a lifestyle that's been shaped by the Word of God and in the uprightness of our heart. The psalmist praised God by learning his word and his judgments. And God, his decision about our thoughts and actions are altogether righteous. And we can't keep from loving him for who he is. And they reflect his character very perfectly. So we need to praise him for his word and for all of the things that he does. And the psalmist resolved to obey all of the Lord's stature. And Jesus required his disciples to completely obey him and to trust him, a total commitment to him. And that is our highest priority. And he intends for us to live for him according to his ways. So we do well to understand that we can't do it by ourselves. Only through the work of the Holy Spirit and understanding the Word of God can we be ready to engage in spiritual warfare because it will come to us when we speak about the Lord. We are wise in His Word when we join the psalmist and seek his help. That's why we ask God not to forsake us. And the psalmist goes on in Psalm 119, 9 through 11, where he gets very personal. He says, wherewithal shall a young man cleanse his way by taking heed thereto according to thy word. With my whole heart have I sought thee. 
O oh, let me not wander from thy commandments. Thy word have I hid in mine heart that I might not sin against thee. God's word keeps us from allowing sin to take control of our lives. Now, this is one of the things that we really need to learn and, and understand. We need to train up our children in the way that they should go. The ages have shown that the kids between 15 and about 25 make all of the choices that affect the rest of their lives. They look at who they were going to date, they look at school, they look at work, they look at who is going to be their spouse, and their choices affect the rest of their lives. So how do we help them make the right, uh, the right choices in their life? We can have them, of course, look at the scriptures and understand them, especially the book of Proverbs. There are 31 in the book of Proverbs, one for each day. And in that, if, if they read it every day, and if the parents help them understand what is being said, they will have the right kind of knowledge to help them make the right decisions. And so it is very good to share the Word of God with them and to have them read it on a regular basis so they understand how to make the right choices. So they need to take heed according to God's Word, which helps them guard their walk with God by obeying his word and living according to his precepts. And we see the psalmist did that. He dedicated himself to seeking the Lord. And seeking the Lord wasn't something that he casually did. <clears throat> he uh, he didn't seek the Lord by, you know, some kind of research, you know, some kind of project. And it wasn't one of his hobbies. His need for the Lord was very deep. And he had put his whole heart into, into serving the Lord and understanding his word. So God's word in his life had filled his heart with spiritual insight that had made a monumental difference to him. So he, uh, threw his entire life into his wanting to know the Lord intimately and follow him completely. He also knew that he couldn't do it by himself and he had to have help. That's why he made his request for help and that's why he asked our Lord to help him. <clears throat> he wanted to obey all of God's statutes. and all of his commands. 
and he didn't want to reject any of God's wisdom. And he used God's word as an anchor to hold him on a steady course as he was going. He said that God's word was a prized possession. He had high regard for God's word and a respect for the sacred nature of the scriptures. So he spent time in the Lord's work and in his word. So he hid the treasure of God's word in his heart. And with God's word in our heart, it has a powerful effect on us. And if it's planted deeply in our hearts, it can change us spiritually. And the spiritual transformation leads to a change in our behavior. And it will help us to not sin against God. The power of His Word at work within our hearts enables us to be delivered from sin's control over us. So that's why God's Word is important to us throughout our lives. And we need to hide His Word in our heart. So how do we do that? First, we can read. And if reading the Word of God has not been part of your life, you can start. You can take time every day to read Scripture and to take time to think about it and to meditate on it. A good place to start is the Gospel of John. And before you read it, ask God to speak to you. He does love you and He wants to meet you in that special time with Him on a daily basis. And then we need to look at ways to store up God's Word in our heart. So, of course, we can memorize Scripture and that helps us even when we don't have a Bible with us. One of the other ways is we can get or we can download one of the audio Bibles. And as, as we drive around, uh, you know, going to and from school or to and from work, we can uh, understand more about the Bible. <clears throat> and then, of course, if you have kids at home, you can use the dinner time uh, to not only eat, uh, but to share God's Word. So there are, you know, several ways that you, you can teach and train. And uh, that is one of the other ways is that you can teach, you know, God's Word as in a Sunday school class or uh, a home Bible study. And uh, you can let God use you as you learn and grow in the Lord. Let us pray. Our Lord and God, thank you for your word and its power to help us as we walk with you daily. And help us to make studying your word a priority and help us to hide your word in our hearts. Our Lord and God, we do thank you that we have your word and that we have the Holy Spirit that lives in us when we 
are saved. And we ask the Holy Spirit to guide us as we read your word, as we study your word, and as we share your word with other people, Lord. May we not be ashamed to share your word. And Lord, we ask again that you would guide us. And I pray this in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen.